Sometimes a television series can look dated in a good way. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most 90s TV shows ever. Uh, his computer has a virus. Every time he tries to print something, it gets erased. Ooh, scary. The only thing scary about computers are the people who use them. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're focusing on live-action shows produced during and set in the 1990s, which, by embodying the style, culture, and ethos of the era, have become emblematic of the decade. Animated series like The Simpsons, iconic as they may be, will not be considered. Nacho, nacho man. I want to be a nacho man. Number 10, Saved by the Bell. <laughs> 90s clothing, 90s hairstyles, this teen comedy had it all, even 90s cell phones. Well, one very noticeable 90s brick phone at least. But since a high school student with a cell phone was basically unheard of at the time, we all noticed. Hello, Mrs. Belly, this is Mr. Tessa Birdie. What? What's wrong with me? Well, you can hear what's wrong with me. I've got laryngitis or horrible cough and <coughs> post nasal drip. The characters felt like an updated version of the Archie cast, but proved quite memorable in their own right. We got to watch Zack, Kelly, Slater, Jesse, Lisa, and of course Screech grow up, have fun, fall in love, help each other out, and deal with issues like bullying and drugs. They covered the classic issues in an open, to the point, and undeniably 90s way. Jesse, you can't sing the night. Yes, I can! I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so scared! Number 9. The X-Files. You see, I've seen the future, and the future looks just like him. Imagine. The 90s for many was a decade of questioning the official narrative and treating conspiracy theories as legitimate possibilities. Well, it's obviously not a vampire. Well, why not? Because they don't exist? On the silver screen, there was Oliver Stone's JFK. On TV, we got The X-Files. In the series, FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully investigate the paranormal while trying to unravel a massive government conspiracy that involves shadowy men, one of whom is quite the chain smoker, working with extraterrestrials to prevent the truth, which is out there, from coming to light. He didn't even seem human. I, I think he was a mandroid. The only time he reacted was when he saw the dead body. The original run ended in 2002, but it was followed by two movies and a revival in 2016, proving that 90s-style conspiracies, when done correctly, are utterly timeless. All I'm saying is it's a monster. Yeah, this is how I like my molder. So you're agreeing with me? No! You're bat crap crazy! Number 8. Family Matters the 80s brought us Revenge of the Nerds, but in the 90s, there was one particular nerd people absolutely fell in love with, Steve Urkel. The Winslow's neighbor wasn't initially intended as part of the core Family Matters cast, let alone a series star. But sure enough, in true Urkel fashion, he fell into the spotlight. What? You mean I've been taking drugs? Why, I've gotta, I've gotta, I've gotta dance! <laughs> to make a one-off appearance on the weekly sitcom, Urgel proved such a hit that he stuck around to bother the Winslows and entertain viewers for the rest of the series. His catchphrase, did I do that, would become a regular occurrence on the show and an ingrained part of 90s culture. Did I do that? <laughs> Number 7. Home Improvement Does everybody know what time it is? Tool That's right, Bit for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor! Home repair shows were a prominent feature of the early 90s TV landscape, so this family sitcom where the father was a celebrity fix-it man was tailor-made for success. Much of the show's comedy spun from the fact that Tim Allen's Tim the Toolman Taylor, someone who saw himself as a man's man, was also quite accident-prone, with repairs frequently going awry. The backdrop for his antics was 90s suburban family life, complete with next-door neighbor slash unofficial life coach Wilson, who Tim only spoke to through a fence in the backyard. Have you, have you seen a real UFO? Maybe. <laughs> Come on, it's just us out here. Maybe. 
With a lovable family and memorable supporting cast, including heartthrob of the era, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, it was a true 90s classic. When something bad happens to me, I, I, um, well, I go to the garage and work on cars. When anything happens to you, you go to the garage and work on cars. <laughs> Number 6. Twin Peaks Viewers were treated to cinematic television the likes of which they'd never seen before when film director David Lynch introduced us to a small, made-up Washington state town called Twin Peaks. This series was always stylish, often funny, sometimes terrifying, and every now and then, downright bizarre. Morning, Pete. Harry. She's dead. Wrapped in plastic. The central mystery of who killed Laura Palmer was to the early 90s what Who Shot JR was to the early 80s. But I think they're gonna lock me up. Why? I don't have an alibi for last night. I was with her. Even though the mystery was solved, and the show ended after just two seasons, it spawned a movie, a devoted cult following, and a revival series 26 years after the original run, just one year off of what Laura Palmer told Agent Cooper back in the 90s. I'll see you again in 25 years. Number 5. Beverly Hills 90210 Being young and rich in the 90s wasn't always easy, at least not on TV. The students at West Beverly High seemingly had more than their fair share of 90s teenage problems, despite living in a posh zip code and driving really nice cars. Brennan, I'm sorry, sorry Hallie, I said it. something terrible. Let's start over. This primetime soap was aimed at teens, making it one of the first of its kind. Its run spanned the whole decade and fully embraced the then-current hair and clothing styles, as well as the cultural trends and music tastes of 90s youth. This landmark show was firmly planted in a place, a time, and in the hearts of a generation of viewers. I'm sorry, I don't know what you expect from me. What about friendship? What about friendship? How far is this supposed to take us? Number 4. Seinfeld 90s culture was very self-aware and filled with popular references to everyday occurrences. This was thanks, in large part, to one show, a groundbreaking observational sitcom following the lives of four people living in New York City. Ethically dubious yet endearing, eccentric though arguably rather ordinary, they were utterly captivating characters. But I don't dip that way. Oh, you don't, huh? No. You dip the way you want to dip, I'll dip the way I want to dip. Give me the chip! Hey, hey, hey! Over the years, Seinfeld popularized concepts like shrinkage, low talkers, restaurants so good they could exclude customers with impugny, and, of course, double dippers, among others. It also introduced the world to the alternative holiday Festivus, which some people celebrate to this day. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now, you're gonna hear about it. Not bad for a show that proudly claims to be about nothing. Just talking? Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> no story? No, forget the story. You gotta have a story. Who says you gotta have a story? Number three, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And look, I won't go far, okay? If the apocalypse comes, beat me. Subverting stereotypical gender tropes may be common in TV today, but in the 90s, it was seriously refreshing. In this Joss Whedon series, Sarah Michelle Gellar's Buffy is a young blonde female, but she's most definitely not the victim. Instead, she's the butt-kicking heroine fighting vampires and other such forces of evil in Sunnydale, California. At the same time, she's trying to live her life as a high school student, keep friendships, and find love, all of which become hopelessly intermeshed with her duties as a vampire slayer. This is the 90s, the 1990s in point of fact, and I can do both. Clark Kent has a job. I just want to go on a date. This show is emotional, funny, and in true 90s fashion, overflowing with quirky charm. It's even got a musical episode. So we will walk through the fire and let it burn. Number 2. Friends. Oh, it's my new beeper. What the hell's a paleontologist need a beeper for? Is it like for dinosaur emergencies? Help! Come quick! They're still extinct! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could be more stereotypically 90s than a group of friends spending their time hanging around in a coffee shop and in their apartments, talking about their jobs, money woes, romantic pursuits, and interpersonal issues. And that's exactly what this sitcom delivered week after week. Y'all ready for this? 
Friends was a huge hit and launched the careers of Jennifer Aniston, Matthew Perry, and pretty much the entire primary cast to varying degrees of success. Regardless of what they've gone on to do since, however, we will always remember them for the simple fact that, in the 90s, they were friends that we never got tired of seeing. 500 megabyte hard drive, built-in spreadsheet capabilities, and a modem that transmits at over 28,000 BPS. Wow, what are you gonna use it for? Games and stuff. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Found the store, Hell's Little Angels. <laughs> Attack two. Yeah, it's a tough job, huh, big guy? So that's why you assigned yourself this talent this morning, huh? I just thought I'd remind myself of what I might be missing when the onslaught of summer starts. Hello, Dennis? Hello? Dennis, turn off the machine. I know you're there. All right, fine. Huddle under your blanket in the corner. Number one, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. If you played an episode, any episode of this legendary sitcom for someone who had never heard of it, they would know right away that it was a 90s show. From the iconic opening Will Smith rap, to the constant references to and guest appearances by the stars of the day, to the clothing and hairstyles, the 90s are in this show's DNA. It can be hilarious at times and downright serious and touching at others, but the one constant is that these characters and their stories are firmly rooted in the decade they live in. When we feel like doing a little time traveling, there's no better guide than the Fresh Prince. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.